Hello everybody, welcome to my tutorial guide here on Stable Diffusion 3D Animation Mode. So I've already set everything up. Again, anytime you're running, just go ahead and run all your cells. Now, um, also if you are having some technical issues, I do have a, a setup guide, but there's also, if you click on this right here, Notebook by Deforum, and you go to this Deforum Discord server, there's um, technical help there. You can ask questions and either one of the people who helped with the notebook might answer you or you might get some of the other users that'll help you there. So that's a really good resource to use there on the Discord server. So today I'm going to deal with 3D animation. And now there's not much difference really between this one and the 2D mode except in the way that the movements are done. So if you know how to do the 2D mode, you pretty much know how to do the 3D mode. You just need to learn what all the movement keys do. So anytime you do an animation, it works on keyframes. So if you notice, all of these have a zero by them. So what we can do is we can change our movement or even our prompts. We can put keyframes in the prompts, which I'm not going to do for this one. I'm just going to keep one prompt here. But like, say we have a 100 keyframe animation at keyframe 50, we could change this to an ocean scene or something. I just have a log cabin right now, something kind of simple to see the movements. So with 3D animation mode, um, these two first parameters here, are, um, well, let me go into this first. The max frames, this just tells you how many frames you want it to make. And I can't remember what that's on by default. I'm just going to put it on wrap. Um, so I'm just doing a sim very quick animations here, 60 frames, so I can show you all these parameters. And we're in 3D mode. So the difference between 2D mode and 3D mode is in 2D mode, you basically just have control over the canvas. Think of your image as like a canvas painting floating in the air in front of you and with the 2d mode you can zoom into that painting turn left or right you can rotate with 3d mode it's more like you're inside a video game level so you have more control over rotations and things like that okay so i'm going to kind of go over these so the translation so the zoom doesn't work at all in this mode that's only for the 2d mode so we use the translation z here for the zooming forward and these all act a little bit different in 3D mode than in 2D mode. So our translation Z, I'm just going to put a 1 here. This is going to just make us go forward. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do some renders with some of the different settings. Let me just kind of go through the list now with you. So, so um, again, we don't use the angular zoom in 3D mode. Our translation X, what that does is think of that like you're in the video game level looking forward. And the translation X, a positive number will move you to the right. A negative number will move you to the left. Now with the Y, that's like an elevator. So a positive number on the Y would move you up. For the translation Y, a negative number would move you down. The translation Z, what that is, is that's your zoom. So right now I have it on one, so that's going to move you forward. A negative number would move you backwards. And I think the numbers you use are between negative 3 and 3. I know it used to be up to 10 in Disco Diffusion, but I think that might be changed for this. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, you can experiment with your numbers. I've just been using one. They do work um, pretty well. So the 3D, the 3D, think of those as just like swiveling movements, like you're standing still but turning your head up, down, left, and right, or like doing a barrel roll in an airplane is the Z. So the rotation 3DX, that will turn your head to the right, a positive number. A rotation 3DX negative number would spin your head to the left like you're looking to the left. I'm just going to put these all on zero for now. The Y, a positive number on the 3DY, the rotation 3DY, you would look straight up. A negative number, you would look straight down. And on the Z, a positive number, it would be like doing a clockwise barrel roll. So that's what all those parameters mean. And then the noise schedule, what that does, how diffusion works, is it actually takes away dots, takes away pixels. So what that does is that adds noise every once in a while, because otherwise you might get some solid areas that will just stay solid for the whole animation and kind of ruin your video. So that kind of fixes that issue. The strength schedule makes one frame look like the last one. So that can't be too high, though, because if it doesn't get enough new information, like it keeps a lot of information from the old frames, it'll just look really bad after a while. So these are pretty good default numbers here to use 0 0.65, 0 0.2, and then one for the contrast schedule. Um, for the match frame, I like the lab or the RBG. But let's go ahead now and we'll render this. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start at the top here. We'll put the translation X to 1 instead of the zoom. We'll just do that. What this will do is this will step us to the right. So this will be like we're inside this little world here, and we're going to take a step to the right. And I've just got my prompt there at Log Cabin. And let's go ahead and run this here. And we'll come and check on it when this is done. Okay, there's our video, and again, and there we are moving to the right. Now, the cabin, that's the other thing, too. It's not going to ever just totally disappear. Like, you can see it, it is giving the motion of moving to the right. But what would eventually happen, like if I put this up to 300 frames, it would just render another cabin. So it's always going to just continue to render your prompt. But with this 3D movement setting, it will kind of give the appearance, you know, of a, th of a virtual 3D world. So... Let me see if I can see it even maybe towards the end making a new one. Uh, it looks like I don't see anything there. Eventually, though, if we went over to the right, it wouldn't just give us trees. We did make another cabin at some point. It's just going to constantly render your prompt, but it will have movement in there. So now let's go ahead and go to the next one, and we will run this, change that, and run this again. I do have the seed, so it's going to give us a kind of a consistent image there okay and let's go ahead and run it okay our animation is done here let's go ahead and you can see we're rising up into the air okay and so now let's go ahead and let's do our next one that zoom in mode let's make sure we run that anytime you do a change you got to run or it won't work okay let's go ahead and render this one so if you notice it starts off doing all 200 steps and then after that, it won't do as many steps for each frame. That is because of the, the strength schedule. So that's what makes each frame kind of look like the previous one. So right now it's still morphing a bit. But um, if you put it up too high, it'll just, it'll just start to look horrible. Okay, this render is winding down. You can see we're getting up close to the cabin now because we've been zooming in on it. So does that mean that it's going to zoom inside the cabin and we can see the cupboards and... The table, maybe a fireplace. Nope. What'll happen is it'll just keep zooming and then it'll generate another cabin beyond this one. Like I was saying earlier, it just keeps generating your prompt over and over again, basically. So while it, it does kind of, you know, have this cool 3D effect, it will just keep generating your prompt over and over again. Let's go ahead now and create the video here. And then our next one, we're going to get into the rotations. And again, this is like standing still, but turning your head left to right, up or down or spinning it in a 360 circle if that was possible. So it's like doing a barrel roll in an airplane. Enter this. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do a final one here. And I'll show you how to kind of mix these motions. And so basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have my main motion just be that forward zoom at keyframe zero. It's going to start. Okay, so here's another thing too, like let's say we want it to go forward for 50 frames, then at keyframe 50, turn to the right, but you don't want to write it like this. This is kind of how you think you would do that then, is just, um, so keyframe 50, we're going to turn to the right at 1, whoops. But actually what this is going to do is this is going to change the number 0, to the number one over these 50 frames. So on keyframe one, it will be, or excuse me, on keyframe two, what will happen is it'll be like 0 0.05 or something. It'll slowly start turning the right until it gets up to one. So what we want to do here is actually something like this. So from keyframe zero to keyframe 49, it's going to be not turning at all. Then on keyframe 50, we're going to put a 1 in there. And then let's have it do that for about 30 frames. Keep that 1 in there. And then keyframe 81, we're going to go ahead and set it back down to 0. So that is how you get that effect. So, so like if you just put a one right there on the 49 or right on the 50 and you didn't have this in there, it would just slowly incrementally work its way up to one. So that's how that works. So we're just going to keep it at a zoom of one. Actually, here's another thing you can do. Anytime there's a change, 
with the um, besides the forward zoom to kind of curb the effect so it's not doing a whole bunch of changes all at once you can kind of just have it um, stop that forward motion while it does those transitions so I'm going to put a zero there at keyframe 50 I'm just going to do a 200 frame video here and then we'll have it stay at zero to keyframe 80 at keyframe 81 we will go back to going forward and then our x let's see what was our x our x is that is the that's the up and down so that's the one we just did in the last one so let me show you how that effect can still be used you know even though it does do that streaking a little bit let's go ahead and we'll do this at keyframe 120 And 121. And we'll do that for twenty nine frames. Okay, and now since I got this transition here too, I'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and stop this one at keyframe 150. It'll stop moving forward. That way it's just not doing a whole bunch of movement effects all at once. All right, 121 is where that starts. Last up to 150. Okay, there we go. Okay, and the Y, this is a left to right. We're going to turn our head left to right. We'll start that at... What do we got? 20, we'll start this at keyframe 199. I'll make this a little longer. So at two, keyframe 200, we're going to spin our head to the right a little bit. we could do here just copy and paste this up here to the Z but we're gonna change the numbers there so at keyframe zero while it's turning the head to the right or excuse me keyframe 200 it's going to stop moving forward then at keyframe 231 it's gonna start moving forward again and the Z what's the Z that I believe that's the barrel roll yeah okay so what this will do the Z this will kind of make it start spinning. We'll go ahead and do that at keyframe 250. So we'll put a 249 for zero. So we won't have any rotation until we hit 250. And we'll just have that till 270. And 271 back to zero. And we'll go ahead and make this a 300 frame animation here. Okay, now I'm going to copy this up to our zoom one. And you got to be careful here too to keep putting all your commas and everything in. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and play the video. And if you can see here, that did follow all those motion parameters. So feel free to experiment with those. You know, you can get really complicated with those. You can just have it simple. You can just have it slowly zooming in. But that's the difference, basically, between 3D mode animation and 2D mode animation. So thank you for watching. And the next tutorial I will cover, we'll finish it out here. We will do the interpolation video next. So now I've done the 2D, the 3D, and the video input. So the next one we will do is interpolation, which is kind of like a time-lapse video. So that can give you a really kind of different effect. This was actually the first time 
that this feature's ever been introduced to this notebook. Um, Disco Diffusion didn't even have that feature. So we'll go ahead and then tackle that subject next time. And here is our final video. You all have a great rest of your day. I will be back very soon with that video on interpolation.